Hey you. How's your evening going? I just got home from work. Um, and I want to record just a little bit of soft speaking. So on my channel, there is... I do a lot of... I like to do some experimental things and just playing with things that I don't see a lot of people doing. But that being said, those sorts of videos take me quite a long time to get finished and accomplished. But I want to offer you a slightly more regular content. So I figure if I intersperse things like this, just simple videos where I'll do some speaking or I'll focus on some some noises and just do some of those. Those videos don't take me very long and they require minimal effort. So I can I can still turn those out while being able to focus also on making the content that interests me and that makes me feel creative, shall we say. So that's exactly what this is going to be. Um, I know that I can't please everyone necessarily with all of these sorts of things, so there will be things that generally don't interest you, some of you. And I do apologize for that, but hey, I gotta, I gotta do something, right? So that's exciting. I have so many ideas and projects. I, I fortunately, um, I was wise enough to start a list because I really like lists. If I don't start a list for things, I tend to forget. But I do have a list of all my ideas and inspirations and projects that I want to do, not only for ASMR, but just in general. And with this list, it'll keep me going for a while, especially if I have little things like this in between. So that's fun. That's lovely, yes. So I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in my life. Oh, also, I, I do want to make one announcement. I have decided that when I reach 999 subscribers, I will make a video video, as in a recording with a video feed, and I will show what I look like and who I am. And I already know what it's going to be, I already know what I'm going to do for it, because it I had the idea came to me and I really liked it, so I know what would happen, basically. And it's fun. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I have not filmed any of it yet. I probably will start working on it ahead of time, and because I expect it to take me a long time. I have never really filmed something like that, and I think that just given how how long certain recordings take me, I think doing this actual video is going to take me a while too. So I'd like to be prepared before the time I reach that point. <laughs> and I think I'm somewhere around, I don't think I've hit 300 yet, I think I'm at like 2 something still. So I got a ways to go and hopefully that doesn't, hopefully it doesn't like skyrocket in a few days and then I'm totally unprepared for this video. <laughs> so that's my announcements for now. I'm really enjoying all the feedback and the comments that I'm getting and I'm really, it, it makes me feel very satisfied that you guys are enjoying my content. Um, I had actually almost not, this wasn't recently, but towards after maybe four or five things that I had posted on my channel, I was, there was like this slump where nothing was really happening, and I kind of got discouraged, and I almost gave up, but I didn't totally give in, and 
I think that was about the time when I was like, I'm gonna make a weird video where I, like, basically make out with my microphone and lick the ears, because I'm just curious what that's gonna be like. I, I, I really didn't know that it was a thing when I made it first. I had no idea that people liked this. I had no idea that people were doing this. It was just a random idea I had, like, yeah, why not? That sounds weird. Let's try that. And that's really what gave my channel the, um, that little first boost that put me on the radar and made people start discovering who I am. So that's kind of a weird coincidence that ended up being nice. And so some, I'll have to pay homage to those people that, uh, that really enjoy that. And I will make, I will do more ear licking things. I don't know how much I can, how creative I can be. I mean, at some point I'll hit <laughs> a creative limit to everything that I can do with certain things. But we'll cross that bridge when I come to it. <laughs> so how about my personal life? Um, it's pretty exciting, I think, kind of. I have a weird, or just a very unique personal life. It's kind of a trite thing to say. I just barely crested six months living in this city for the first time. And I don't think I'll stay here for much more than a year. I... It's interesting because I don't really like this place that much. I kept, for a long time, I kept telling myself that I did. It was like, yeah, I, I like this place. I, I'll, I can stay here for a while, I guess. It doesn't, no big deal. And I really like the weather here. Well, I like it about 70%. I live in Arizona. And I love, I adore how much sunshine we get, even to the point to where I don't mind the heat itself. I don't mind that it gets really hot here, which it does, by the way. <laughs> They're not joking. I don't mind the heat, though, but the part that I don't like about the weather here that I didn't know happened until I actually moved here was we have a monsoon season. And that basically means we have crazy rainstorms for a few months. It's the monsoon season's just about ending. It's if it's not over now, it's it'll be over really, really soon. And it should start to cool off pretty soon. Although it's forecasted like the next two days are over a hundred still. Which is not ideal for the beginning of October, but whatever. My nose itches, hold on. That was a long itch. I'm so excited. I am like shakingly excited for winter because I don't like winter. I don't like cold at all. And this is going to be the first winter of my life that didn't completely suck. And that's amazing. I'm so overjoyed about that. <laughs> and it's going to be great. I'm stoked. The winters here, like the daytimes, just hover around 60 to 70. Night times, maybe, and the cold ones will drop to like 40 or something, but that's okay. <laughs> but I already know just from <laughs> how I've been here so far that when it drops, even when it's like 70 or 60, I'm going to be so cold. Because <laughs> in the mornings when I wake up, I keep my, um, I keep my windows and my door open all night. And in the mornings I wake up and it's about 70 degrees and I'm cold. Like, I have to wrap up in a blanket or else I'm just too cold. <laughs> so that's... It's gonna be funny. It's still gonna... It's gonna be so much better than everywhere else I've been, though. Ugh. Winter, man, that's gross. 
So, uh, recently in my life, I've been, since I moved here, for the first maybe month or two after I moved here, I was driving to work. But then I realized that I had a bike and I wanted to be more active and not drive to work and I wanted to bike instead so I started biking and it's not that far to my job it's on a bike it would take me anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour depending on the traffic and the route that I took so that was kind of nice and I've enjoyed biking ever since that that time where I started doing it and I did it every day that I stopped driving entirely which is kind of nice because I have a black car and black cars are not fun in states known for their heat it's just inappropriate I love my car, she's really cool but I'm going to drive her as minimally as I possibly can and she's down with it she's been on some big trips lately and she could use a little bit of a rest so I've continued biking and it's not really exercise to me anymore it's just it's just transportation it's I enjoy it however that being said <laughs> about three or four weeks ago my bike wheels were stolen and this came to much of a surprise to me for starters, when I first moved here and I was driving to work, I kind of forgot that I had a bike and it was just chained up very, very poorly outside. Um, not right outside my apartment door, but right to the bottom of the railing at the bottom of the stairs there. And nothing had happened. I didn't touch the bike for those two or three months that I was driving. And nothing happened to it. Like someone I did notice when I finally started biking that someone had tried to pick the lock on my little cable lock but they failed so the bike nothing happened to it and at that point I just kinda stopped worrying and there are a couple other people that have bikes here and they all tell me that it's I should be more careful with it because it's notorious for bike crime in this not only in this city but in um, my complex in particular so I I did start bringing my bike into my apartment and I would just set it in the closet overnight and that was fine it was no big deal and I did that for a long long time and then lots of times when I record my videos for you guys I record them in the closet because it's the quietest place in my apartment and it's where I can basically just turn out the best sound quality but when my bike is in there I don't have a lot of room to do things so for a while I was just putting my bike out into my bedroom and just sitting it in here but that kind of just juts in the middle of the room too and cuts out a lot of my space so one night in particular I was like eh I'm just going to leave it out on the railing again, like, I, I did lock it up with my U-lock, and, like, it was secure and all that jazz, so I was like, yeah, I'll just leave it out here tonight, I want to work on stuff, and I need my room, so I did that, and the next day, I went out to, I got all my stuff ready, and went out to ride my bike to work again, and I just I had to stare at my bike for a minute, and there was this weird moment of a pattern being totally shattered and I told my bike you you used to have wheels <laughs> where did those go and they were taken by someone less fortunate than me I think that I'm not really upset, I guess, because I know that someone that would steal my bike wheels is not someone that's having, 
like the greatest of life and because if they were if they had what they needed they wouldn't be stealing things there's really no point in thievery unless you're trying to fend for yourself and survive so that's you know that's fine someone needed them more than I did they also took my disc brakes and a little light that I had just a little spotlight just because my my light that I had ended up breaking so I had a little headlamp like wrapped around the handlebar which was really ghetto but it was free instead of having to replace my light so I lost all those things <laughs> and I called the bike place one of the bike shops around here that I kind of liked and I asked them, I was like, hey, could I maybe trade in my frame towards getting a new bike or something? And they said they didn't do that. But then the guy just asked me, he was like, hey, well, what kind of bike do you have? And so I told him. And <laughs> he was like, no, that's terrible. That that bike is a piece of junk. Like, we're not, no one's going to do anything for that. <laughs> and it's funny because... Apparently I'm not at like a bike snob or a bike connoisseur or anything because I thought it was actually a nice bike. My dad got it for me for Christmas a few years ago and it looked like a nice bike. It looked well built and all these things, but I guess not. <laughs> and so that was kind of funny. I guess I can't really do anything with that. I have been considering getting a new bike. Today I was looking at folding bikes, which I have mixed feelings on, so I'm not going to do anything about it yet, because bikes are kind of expensive. Also just looking at the wheels themselves and the disc brakes, if I ended up doing that, that would be expensive. So what I've been doing in the meantime is I have been walking slash jogging and I coined the word wogging I've been wogging to work and let me tell you it is a world of difference between biking almost four miles and wogging almost four miles it is intensely much more work <laughs> which is actually kind of cool though like I was using the fact that my wheels got stolen as a motivation to get in better shape and to really tune into my body and it's given me a lot of insight into fitness in general and just how I treat my body and how I how I really live in it what it means to be in this body that I have and it's opened a lot of doors that I think are really useful to at least acknowledge. So that has led me to more adventures. Back when I was riding my bike to work, I would always see litter all over the side of the roads. And I always wanted to stop and just pull out a grocery bag and then just pick some of it up, like just clean up the streets a little bit. But I never did. I think I was it was partially laziness and partially because it was like I just wanted to get home and I didn't want to stop and do extra things to delay my homecoming. But the first day that I walked to work, I realized that there was really it wasn't gonna slow me down in any sense. So I stopped and I got out one of my grocery bags and I picked up litter. And I filled that sack five times before I got to work and emptied it. There were a lot of trash cans like by the bus stops and things. So I cleaned up five grocery bags of trash. And this was really cool, like, it was, it was nice to be able to do this. I felt like I was contributing to the planet and doing something nice. However, 
lots of my stories have like this surprise twist. <laughs> However, as I was getting, there was like a plastic cup that was buried deep in this thorny, bushy, spiky thing. And I was bent over trying to get it out. And I had to really get in there deep to get it out. But I finally, I succeeded. And I put it in my bag, felt accomplished, and I turned and continued on my merry way. <laughs> but then my foot started hurting. And, like, a lot. <laughs> and so I thought maybe a thorn had got lodged in my foot or something. So I looked down to get the thorn out. And it turns out that no, that is not a thorn. That is about... 10 to 20 very angry fire ants <laughs> who had climbed onto my foot and were viciously letting me know that they don't like me. <laughs> and that's kind of a, a panicking moment for me. <laughs> so I like, oh no. And I sweep them all off and... <laughs> start doing kind of a dance because my foot is stinging and I get them off and continue walking kind of like dancing a little bit in pain and it hurts for about 20 minutes more and then it does stop it does eventually stop and I get to work and everything's fine I have a good day at work and then go home and that was on a Friday all of that occurred on a Friday then, on Saturday or Sunday, I don't remember which, my foot decided that it didn't like that ant venom, and it got really swollen, like absurdly swollen, and I had to drive to work every weekday the following week because my foot did not stop being swollen and I couldn't even get my shoes all the way on. So the idea of walking four miles on that that kind, that condition of a foot was not appealing at all. <laughs> and so even I had to talk to like my manager at work and just explain to them that I'm not going to be able to fully put my shoe on because it's like a health code thing and they they don't like us wearing socks exclusively which is fine they were cool with me just like half wearing my shoe <laughs> so that was that was an interesting conversations about a week later about that friday after the friday that i got stung my foot was pretty much baseline. It it healed up and it was good. We weren't really sure why, not only why it didn't swell up for a day or two, but also why it lasted so long. We think that maybe I just could have been really allergic to the ant venom or something. We, I mean, it's just a pulling at straws at that point. But that all resolved itself. Then, the week after that, I was really happy that I didn't have to drive anymore, and I logged to work every day that following week. However, <laughs> surprise twist part three, I now am in a decent amount of pain because I have, as I have discovered today, something called Achilles tendonitis, which is basically I have been overdoing it and my Achilles tendon is not happy. It is, it has been a little overworked and it's letting me know that this is not okay by hurting. And I did not know this was a thing. I, like I said, I just found out today that I have this. And if you would have asked me before, I would have told you it sounded like 
something I would have made up to get out of gym class in middle or high school. <laughs> but no, this is in fact a real thing. And both my team leader and my manager told me to stop running entirely until this heals up, because I guess it can become quite a serious problem if not given time to heal. And so I'm going to... They, she said I can walk. She said I can walk as long as it's not hurting, which means I can't walk yet. <laughs> so I drove to work today, and I think I'll have to do it for a little bit, just until this clears up. But I really want it to heal, because I'm... Just running to work is making me feel really good. I'm feeling in better shape, and just like my body is having positive effect from it, so that's awesome. But I really want this... I did a tiny bit of research at work, and I'll probably do more in the morning, but I read that the Achilles tendon is one of the, lar one of the largest tendons in the body, and that makes it vulnerable or something like that makes it really easy to injure and it's like bad things can happen to it if you don't let it heal and I'm rather fond of my feet so I'm going to kind of baby them for a little bit and be gentle I think my feet are kind of swollen again I'm not sure why though but it's it's getting harder to put on my shoes like they are they're more tight around my feet than they normally are cuz i wear i wear those um vibram five finger shoes they're the shoes with the fancy toes in them the toe slots and I just, I mean, I really like the shoes in general. I know there was that big fiasco, like, oh, they made all these health claims and they're not true and all these things. I don't care. I really don't care. I just like the shoes. But I was also told that those shoes make running a lot more strenuous on the feet because it's pretty much like running barefoot, which is a lot more work than running with shoes on, on the feet themselves. So that's... That could be part of the reason why I got this Achilles tendonitis. But no matter what it's from, I am going to have to just be mindful of basically the condition that they're in and keep a close eye on my feet. <laughs> but that's okay. It gives me time to keep a close eye, keep a close watch on the status of my body and what's going on with it. Can you hear that water? I'm not sure if you can hear that. I'll turn your head that way. Oh, that must have just been a toilet or something. Usually, the water sounds like that. I guess that one was pretty loud. The one, there's one water sound that just loves to hang out for a long time. <laughs> it especially enjoys times when I want to record something. And I don't know what it is. Like, it, it's literally there for a long time, but it's, it's quieter than that. But it's still audible from my microphone. So I really like, I like to turn out quality content and quality sound quality. That's clumsy. Um, but in order to do that, I pretty much need total silence, which isn't that hard to come by here, depending on the times, apparently. Some days, some weeks are better than others. Let me see what, uh, what I'm up to time-wise here. Oh wow, I've been blabbing on for a half hour. That's amazing. So I'm not too concerned about the uh, background noise for these sorts of recordings. Like, my front door is open, and I can hear some crickets out there and all that stuff. Not really concerned about it. It 
so continuing back with my living situation like I said I've been here six months now I have to be here for at least a year because my my lease is that long I moved in on March 28th of this year and my lease goes until March 28th of 2016 after that I can do whatever I feel like um, I was going to I had something else I was going to bring up what was it I do not know So, to recap, 999 subscribers, I show my face, I reveal myself. If I do happen to start making content, releasing some of the music that I've written, which I won't do here, I have a separate channel that I would do that for. Um, eventually, I will record videos of me singing and playing songs that I've written, but I will not show myself on even on my music channel until I show myself on this one. So you can't, you won't be able to discover me that way. And I'll mention it when I, when I do post some things. Finally, I will just if anyone's actually interested, I will just say, hey, I'm uploading some music now. Most of my music's pretty mellow. I don't write very intense things. And there's some of my songs that were extremely relaxing. And I will be sure that you know about those if I release them. Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Seriously, I... I really enjoy just reading all the silly things that some of you say and all the thank yous. I I don't feel obligated to respond to everything because in many cases you're just saying thank you and please know that I do read those and I do feel I I do feel grateful that I'm receiving that and grateful that I can help you in the first place. <laughs> that being said, I do get a little tired of like having this like having a thank you war a war of gratitude because they'll you'll say thank you and then I'll say thank you and then I feel like you're just gonna keep going back and forth but I do appreciate you I am very grateful for the people that listen to me and that enjoy my stuff and I know that partially from the way that I upload my content, I'm going to remain relatively off the radar. Because it's the things like the ear licking, and if I were making more content that would appeal to bigger audiences, such as if I did have videos where people could see me, um, if I did, if I labeled all of the, the things that was in my content, and just from the get-go, if I made stuff that was more appealing to more people because a lot of my things are just kind of abstract and not really designed to appeal to everyone but I do think that they're interesting and I do think that more people would enjoy them if they came across them so maybe maybe I'll explore ways of reaching out a little bit extending myself farther than my little circle that I've built so far. I think I had the idea of posting anything that I've done on Reddit, just saying like, hey, I make kind of weird things. You, you should hear them and see if you like them. But I haven't done that yet. And maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't really use Reddit, just for the record. <laughs> It's... <laughs> I don't know.
think that's a good length for these videos. It's kind of, it is kind of amazing that I talk for so long. If you hear me, or if you see me in person, I am not talkative. Unless you get me started on some subject that interests me, and there are a couple. But I much, much prefer to listen to people, and I'm a good listener. I will keep you talking most of the time. So when I have crazy monologues like this, it's always interesting. I do that thing where people will get me started on a subject and I'll go on and on. And then maybe 10 or 15 minutes will go by and all of a sudden I'll pause and like, have I been speaking this whole time? And I go, oh my god, you need to, it's your turn, go. <laughs> but I can't quite do that as much right now. So I'm stuck rambling on my own. I'm just amazed I did it for so long. Yay! <laughs> oh, that was another thing that I wanted to say. I find it, I find it really funny that <laughs> so many of you are um, quote unquote enamored with my voice <laughs> because I find my voice quite uh, abrasive, maybe. Um, annoying. Not not necessarily in the way that I hear it. And I think that's just because I'm not used to hearing it the way that other people do. Meaning that, you know, I have this resonance in my skull that makes my voice sound different to me than it does to you. And when I hear recordings of myself, it's like, eh, no, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> and then they'll... <laughs> I find it so funny. Everyone else is like, oh, your voice is so sweet. Like, I love this. Oh, it's so amazing. And... <laughs> I don't know. It's, just, it's funny to me. I don't dislike my voice. For a while I did, but I got over that. But I still don't think that it's anything to write home about. I have been told that I have a nice singing voice too, but that's because I will I will credit that to my ears rather than my voice. Because whether or not my actual voice is good, I can I have extremely good ears. Like I have a very good sense of pitch and just very good ears in general. So if I'm singing off pitch, I know and I I am very sensitive to that. I am aware of it and I will correct it. So if I'm good at singing, it's not necessarily, well, it doesn't have to be because I have a good voice. It could just be because I'm very aware of where I'm singing and where I need to be singing. Um, so we got about a minute. I already did a recap, which is funny that I recapped in the middle of the video rather than the end. But whatever. I do what I want. It's 11.20. I'm gonna go to sleep soon. I get up at 6 every morning. It's kind of weird that I do that. Because I don't have to go to work until 5 in the evening. Some things in my life don't make a lot of sense. But that's probably why I adore my life so much. I, I keep my life interesting just because I feel like it, I guess. Mm. And on that note, <laughs> I think I should stop. So, my friend, my beautiful, lovely listener, you, I want you to do me a favor. And have the most beautimous eve night you have had in all the days you can remember. I want you to sleep tight, and I want you to dream of beautiful, magnificent things. Things that you would never see. 
and then be sure to be grateful for something. You have a lot of things to be grateful for. That is, if you're looking for them. So, take a gander, take a peek, lean in, and look carefully, and say thank you to someone, or something, or just yourself.